Hi, Sai. Welcome back to Julian's Garden. I hope you're all doing well. It's very cold today, so I got two pullover on, one jacket on. And I'm sorry I haven't put up frequent video lately because I have been sick and then I have been busy doing this project. So I'm at my backyard now and this area in the middle of the yard. So it, before like, I got lawn all over it. Uh, but now I took quite large sections uh, to like turn to the veggie patch or garden bed as well because I do like uh, the um, the they look neat and tidy because I don't have a huge yard. I think if I have acre, acre, something like that, I can turn in, I just very some uh, compost there. Maybe I don't need to do any edging for, for them. Uh, but because um, our backyard is quite small and I want it look neat and tidy, so I'm going to like use the timber to put around it as well. Just kind of garden bed as well. But it's very simple way. So in the future, uh, maybe at the uh, next season, if I don't like it, or maybe it's too clouded in this, I can easy, easily just move them out or get away or do whatever after that. But anyway, let me show you. So here is at the lawn. Let me show you. You can see the grass. Um, they're not quite long, but some type of grass that I don't know. And some kind of weeds as well. But I know that this type of grass or weeds, they're not aggressive. So that's why I did not lay any any material or anything on top of this grass or weeds at all. I just move mushroom compost into the whole section over here. I don't know, maybe just over five meter length and the width of this uh, bed, I think um, 1.3 or 1.4 meter width. So I think I could have quite a lot of room to grow more veggies and maybe some pretty things as well. I want to grow some flower in here as well. But you know, every year, every place and every situation are different. But for me, that's the way I'm doing it. But uh, if you live or your yard have very aggressive weeds or grass, I would recommend you move them. You take dig all of them out and then you dump compost in or do a nasania layer if you have a time uh, to prepare for them and let them sit for six months or so or a year and then you start planting them. But in here, I uh, dump, I think, 20 centimeter high of the mushroom compost in here. I know before they much higher though. So I moved the compost here oh, two weeks ago and now I saw the decay sink down a little bit but I know that after we do all the edging around it I will top up more compost for it so ready for planting and I hope that after well, four months all the weeds or the, the grass underneath the mushroom compost they will die down but uh, in the meantime I because I lay the compost it's quite thick and tall like that so uh, for me I don't think it had any issue for me to plant anything in there at all in fact I already planned several things let me show you. All right, let me walk over here. You can see here uh, on the top, they look quite dry, but you know that they underneath it look very moist. Look at that. But here, let me show you. So I got several things I need to plan or I want to plan in this batch or this patch actually. So this is uh, a spare bush that I got three bushes. So this one, and another one that I laid down here, uh, I thought that I'm going to um, show you uh, because the other day I was a little bit bored and then I went out and planted this bush and after that I thought maybe I'm going to show you in the video what they look like uh, because I think the roots are very, very big, uh, even the plant is very small, but anyway, so that. Uh, what I want to show you. Uh, and this is the salvia bush. Now this salvia bush is in the, my front yard and I have been busy planting roses and other things up there. And I just don't want to throw this, um, uh, this salvia bush out because they're very good for the bees. Uh, and I could really like this color. This have a kind of creamy, peachy color. It's really beautiful and the bees love it and it's very hardy. Uh, so in in this garden bed, I'm going to grow a lot of corns, uh, some type of sunflower, and the first time I'm going to try to grow pumpkin as well because I have never grown pumpkin before. Uh, so that is the plan. And but in the meantime, I got several bushes of asparagus that they self-seeded in my garden. They were over there. 
So I got, I duck two bushes up, I put them up. Uh, it was tiny to sitting and they grew so fast. Now they are big now. Uh, they sell it, uh, sell seeds it not spring. Uh, so I think they are just like uh, one years old. Uh, and I just want to show you, they already forming up the, the spear. Can you see that? Look at that, even only one year old. So if you grow the seasoning like this, they normally they recommend to leave them around two years and after that you uh, should have it the spear and the first year you should let the to grow and for the roots established. Uh, but I already have a lot in my garden already. I think I got six bushes um, and all the three new little one I did, they are just bonus for me so I think I will have it done if they sending any more spear but anyway this one I'm going to plant this area and I got another one and I want to plant maybe another one here so it's kind of a triangle actually so one there one here and one here and in the future I will plant like corn in between them uh, and sunflower in between them uh, and I think for the last session over here I want to grow pumpkins and then maybe I let several vines, maybe one or two vines so I let them to crawl all over the edge of the other part of the grass as well because um, this area, I do, just don't care much about the weeds and grass here. They are not attractive. Uh, some of the parts here, oh, I got one section of the grass that I really like because I sold the seed uh, two years ago. Look at that, they're doing, they're looking very good. Even in the winter now in Campbell, Australia, we got frost and cold and they're very hardy. I just use the seeds in bunnings. And of course, in all my fun year, I sold the seeds. Uh, by myself, we own the beautiful grass that I got. So let me show you the other bush of asparagus. It's still here. Let me show you. It's self-seated. Just right next to one of my row bush. There. You can see that. And this row bush is struggling so much because of that asparagus growing next to it. And this doesn't, uh, can't take much of nutrients because the asparagus, they are very, uh, I mean, very hungry plants. So it takes a lot of nutrients. So pull that little row bush. So once I just move that asparagus out and plant into the new veggie patch, I think that row bush can be very happy. And you can see the side between them. Uh, you can see that little row bush there. And to compare with this one, you can see what a difference. Because I planted at the same time, they were the same size when I planted them. All right, so let me move that asparagus uh, bush real quick. And I can show you the, the, the root system as well, because I, we are kind of like in the middle of winter now. And you can very easily see to get bare root asparagus from garden center or from bunnings so, or even from online as well. As well. All right, so I think a little bit tricky. Let me put my gloves on first to dig the asparagus out because I don't want to uh, to disturb the row bush too much because I don't want to damage the, their roots. But also I want to get at least quite a good portion of the roots of the asparagus as well. So a little bit tricky case over here. And I do have some weed here. Let me just pull this one out real quick as well. So, you know, I do have weeds around the garden, but it's not too bad because I always use a lot of compost, but also I use a lot uh, of, you know, trimming the branches, I see, to try to do drop and drop, so it stop the weeds going as well. And this bit, I need to get this one out. Okay, so here we go. Can you see the spear here? Look! Wow, only one year so. It seems like I can have several bush actually. Look! One clumps. And here another one. Oh my goodness! I will have another one as well. 
And this one, look at that, the spear so thick. Oh. And here another one. Okay, it's Al. Look, three. All right, that's a big surprise. I did not expect it that. So now I got three, three bushes of the sparrow girl. So that is a lot. I have to find room for them. I think I just try to squeeze all of them in here then. And this one, look at that. The spear is so big, so chubby already. And kind of the size of my finger, even only one year old. So seen that the bow bush is chuckling so much. All right, so let me see. Uh, maybe one bush here. What do you think? I'm not sure. Maybe on this side. I should put one on this side. And maybe another one on this side too. And another one. on this side so maybe the whole area the whole the inside one i will lay all the sparrow girls maybe that would make more sense all right and this one i move over here i think that's make more sense okay so you can see start from here so this one i already planted and then one here one here one here one here all right so for the bear witches the sparrow girls when you plant them uh just very easy, just like kind of the way you plant your roses, but they love very good drainage as well. And example, so let me just get the compost out and make them out. And you, you put the bare wood on the top. I think a little bit lower. and just let it to sit on the mount like that and you just spread their roots around i think that's there so you can see here the mount so the bear water just sit on top of the mount and their waters spreading around here just like that, and now you backfill it. All right, and pet a sparrow girls. They love full sun, they love a lot of sun, a lot of water. So always keep them moist. And then you backfill them. And for this garden bed, it's kind of a bonus for me because if I don't do anything, it's just like one patch of messy non anyway. So it's nice to get something out of it. And the interesting for this garden bed is in the winter, there are no sun at all, actually. But I know that asparagus, they're not uh, active in the winter. They just grow and put a lot of growth in the spring and in summer. But I know that if we got more sun for it, it will be happier. But I think that is okay. It's a, yet I say it's a kind of bonus for me anyway. And in the future, maybe next year, if I don't like it bad anymore, I can just give them away because I'm running out of room. Because I think all my spot, I just priority for my roses. But anyway, uh, because all this asparagus, good. I didn't have to buy them. They just self-seated themselves, so uh, I have nothing to lose anyways. And it's nice to do some experimenting. Then you have it, that's the second one. And just press them down. Make their wood contact into the compost. Oh, do you know what? I think I changed my plan. So I got two more left of a sparrow bush here. I think I just put them on this side as well. Let me standing back here. You can see a little bit better. Oh, I got something behind me. So in here, I just show you. I plant two a sparrow bush here. 
and then I want to the other three asparagus put over here. So in the future, this kind of the whole empty section here, I can plant a flock of the corns here. Because you know corns are pollinated by the wind, so it's better not to plant them in the row. So if I plant the whole row of asparagus, so that means on the other side left, so that means I have to plant maybe two rows of corn. So not that not a good idea. I think I'm going to just do that, just plant a spare goods over there. And let me show you this one. So the one I'm putting up uh, in early spring, you can see they are root system like this. Why the bare rooted one I just dug up? <laughs> I chopped quite a lot of root. Look at that, a little bit smaller or quite smaller. Why is this one here? Alright guys, so all planted in. I have water them in though. I need to go around after filming this uh, cliff and then I water them. So the next project is uh, my parents-in-law, they come down here tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So my father-in-law will help me with the job all over the edging. Uh, from, and I just try to make it a little bit tidy and neat and we just use only one layer of timber anyway. And the timber is just around maybe 20 centimeter high. So that is standard. Um, high of the timber but I'm going to use the bricks now I got some bricks from my uh, from the buy nothing goods and she's very lovely she gave me some so that I think that's enough to put one row uh, like on the top of this lawn, one row down and then put the timber uh, on the top. So because we got the, it, when we have a lot of rain, so the timber is not contacting to uh, trade into the soil or the water and the timber will last uh, a little, little bit longer. Is that what I think? And it being a little bit high for the, for the garden bed as well. Because also I don't want it too, too high though. You know the garden bed is very good. And I mean the raised bed is a very good idea to, uh, for garden garden in clay soil but also another downside if it's it high that means you have to water it more often all right so uh, I and the corns are very hungry and need a lot of water so that's why I don't want to make the garden bed the two tone and plus it might be just very temporary as well so I don't want to invest a lot in um, the expenses of the timbers and other things as well so I think that's it for the video today so I'm so pleased that I can show you this is the part one of uh, how to turn non into the veggie patch and I plant some asparagus today as well. I hope that, that the way I showing you how to plant bare rooted asparagus but also the potted one as well so you can know the idea how to plant them. Thank you so much again for watching and see you next video. Bye bye!